Thank you, and welcome to our portion of the concert this evening. It's nice to see that so many people stayed for us. We have a lot of numbers on our side of the program, but band pieces are typically shorter than orchestra pieces, so don't worry. It's not going to be that long. So that first piece that we played um, is Flourish for Wind Band. It's written by Ray Fun Williams who is a very prolific composer that wrote a lot of music for band and orchestra. Um, he's probably primarily known as an orchestral composer, um, but he was just masterful with composing for winds. Um, and so thankfully, you know, we get some of his wonderful music for wind band. Uh, the next piece that we are going to play is a transcription of a piece called Nimrod from the Enigma Variations. Uh, this piece uh, is a little bit, a little bit cryptic, I guess you could say. Uh, no one really knows um, why uh, why Elgar named it the way he did, um, but they did a little bit of research, and the the best thing that they can figure out is that um, it's actually a, a kind of a a piece dedicated to one of his very closest friends, um, and Nimrod is a great hunter, uh, and so. I think that he must have had some very uh, sincere feelings for this friend um, and wanted to be sure that um, those were uh, brought forth in the music. And so this next piece is Nimrod from the Enigma Variations, arranged by Alfred Reed.
Thank you. So the next piece, uh, it would not be a proper band concert without a march. So we're going to play a march. Um, and I personally like playing marches. I think they're a lot of fun. They're very bandy, I guess you could say. Um, but it, uh, the march is kind of a, a rich tradition that bands hold, and so I really like playing a march. Um, and I tried to find one that uh, maybe hasn't been heard a ton. Not like Stars and Stripes Forever that, you know, you hear every 4th of July, even though you don't know that it's called that, for those of you that don't know marches, you've heard it before. Um, unless, I suppose, you're Canadian or not American, you know, I guess. Um, I, I, I keep forgetting that I'm on an international campus here. Um, so this piece I picked is called Zacatecas, uh, and it was written by, I have to see, Henero Codina, um, who lived in the state of Zacatecas in Mexico, uh, and he was an accountant. So any of you with accounting skills, maybe you can compose music as well. Um, anyway, but uh, he also was um, a really uh, well-known composer in the area, uh, and this, this particular march is very well known in Mexico now. Um, I, I think it's the, the official march of the state of Zacatecas. Uh, and anyway, it's really a lot of fun. So this is Zacatecas.
So there's your march. Um, we will now kind of transition a little bit. So that was kind of like the standard band literature. Um, but seeing how December is upon us, and the Christmas season is almost here, and it's officially after Thanksgiving, so this is OK, <laughs> we're going to play some Christmas music for you. So we will begin that portion of our set by playing Fanfare for Christmas, which is a medley of all a number of different Christmas songs that you will know. So like I said, very short. You know, we had seven pieces and we had half the semester to work on them, so they're all very short. Um, every semester, we have the opportunity to have um, band, uh, music education students with an emphasis of, on, in band. Um, we have those students that have the opportunity to conduct this ensemble um, kind of towards the later part of their degree. In fact, both of these students are student teaching next semester. Um, and so we've had the, the honor of working with them and um, They've done a really wonderful job. Uh, so now is their final chance to conduct their final piece of the semester. Um, so first, uh, I, I felt like Amazing Grace would go well with our um, Christ-centered theme. Uh, and so I didn't pick it. He picked it. It just happened that it worked out really well. Um, but uh, Brennan Jesse will be our next conductor, and he will be conducting Amazing Grace.
Let's give Brennan another round of applause. That was great. <laughs> the next piece that we will play for you um, was a piece that I was not aware of. Um, and one of our tuba players, we were chatting one day, and he has this kind of repository of band music that I wish I had. Um, and he's like, yeah, I think there's a Christmas song called Christmas Day by Gustav Holst. And I looked it up, and there was, and we owned it. So uh, this next piece is by Gustav Holst. You may know that name because he wrote The Planets. So if you know orchestral music, you probably know The Planets, like Mars, Jupiter, etc. <laughs> Not a scientist. Um, so Gustav Holst, he's another one of those really great writers that just wrote really well for wind band. And he, we have many, many pieces written by Gustav Holst. But this particular piece was not written for band. It was originally written for choir. Um, and so if you have a chance, look it up sometime. Uh, it's called Christmas Day by Gustav Holst. And, and listen to a choir sing it. It's, it's wonderful. Um, but this arrangement was done by a band composer and arranger, Larry Dane. So this is Christmas Day.
we're to the last piece. So thank you for coming this evening. We appreciate you staying if you were here for the orchestra portion. Um, and thank you for being such a wonderful audience. Our last piece will be conducted by a student conductor as well. Um, and this piece uh, is a really unique piece. It's fairly hard. <laughs> um, but when we first sight read through it, it was just too charming not to do. So um, the, the final piece that we'll play for our concert tonight is called Twas the Night Before Christmas. Um, the band setting is written by Newell H. Long, but of course you are familiar with the story, Twas the Night Before Christmas, or a poem or whatever. I'm not an English major either. Um, so for this, uh, we will have Jeffrey, oh my word, Hadfield. Wow, I've known him for a long time. I shouldn't forget his last name. Jeffrey Hadfield will be our conductor for this final piece, and I will be the narrator. So please welcome Jeffrey Hadfield to conduct. He warned me this would happen. <laughs> I had nightmares over Thanksgiving break about it. was the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds. While visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. in her kerchief and I in my cap. Had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter. I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window. I flew like a flash. Tore open the shutters. 
and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away, dash away, dash away all. as dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkle I heard on the roof, the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot. And his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down on a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight.
Have a nice evening. Thank you. Good night.